Hello, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and the Conscious Resistance uh, on YouTube. Um, I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we have Jim Limber Davis, who is a anarchist coming in from Indiana uh, and is also an author, the author of the book Liberty Defined, which is a, a wonderful, um, a wonderful introduction to anarchy and volunteerism. Um, so, Jim, so tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe how you, how you became an anarchist. Well, it's uh. It's not an easy thing to get into. Uh, it's a very long story, so I'll make it as short as possible. Um, it's more of a, uh, more of just a asking questions and keep asking questions. I was never satisfied with the uh, answers I was getting when I asked questions of other people, and so I just kept asking. Um, it started with my dad. I asked him questions, okay, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do that? And um, it was always the same thing, because I said so, or that's just the way things are done, or because it's the rules, it's the law. And I wasn't satisfied with that. I didn't know that I was looking for the answers that voluntarism and anarchy and all that had to offer, not at the time, but now here, 15, 20 years later, that's where I'm at, and uh, I just I kept seeing little symbols and books I was reading and movies I was watching, clips and songs, and started piecing things together. And I suppose right around 2005, 2006, I started reading a whole bunch of political books, everything from Glenn Beck, Bill O'Reilly, uh, you name it, I was reading it. Um, but the only one that I really connected with was probably John Stossel, I suppose and uh, went through there and kept reading and then eventually I stumbled across a few little things here and there uh, Mises and Rothbard and I liked what they had to say never actually read any of their books oh never really? Read, I've never read any of their books oh okay <laughs> so I see their stuff all the time but I never read it I figured all of this stuff out for myself uh, it's not um, I just knew I was looking for something and I couldn't pin it down and then somebody said to me one day, you know, what you're advocating is a lot like non-aggression. And so I took that and I just ran with it and I looked it up and then I started, then that led to voluntarism and then here I am. Cool. Actually, I didn't even know John Stossel wrote a book. I, I didn't even know that. He's written several books. Okay. I, yeah. Would you, but he's not really like an, an outright anarchist, but he's probably more like, I guess, a libertarian, like minarchist, would you say? Uh, yeah, I think that would be a fair assessment. Yeah. I think uh, to protect his career, he doesn't give away too much. <laughs> so. Yeah, but he does have a lot of great um, uh, segments on you know, various uh, principles like you know, the broken window fallacy and you know, mm -hmm. debunking you know, the Great Depression myths and you know, Federal Reserve and kind of, mm -hmm. kind of stuff. I guess, I guess to the extent that he can and stay on mainstream television, right? <laughs> mm, I think so, yes. I guess in the same sense of, uh, have you followed at all Ben Swan? Yeah, I, uh, I like a lot what he has to do. He's not far, or he didn't start far from where I'm at now. So I actually uh, have met him in person. Really? Although awesome. he doesn't know who I am, but I met him through another friend. So Ah, all right. But, uh, he's, a, he's actually a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah I, f I follow his benswan.com uh, stuff for a while, and um, yeah, it's really awesome content. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about your book. And uh, what, uh, you know, inspired you and what's it about? Well, uh, Liberty Defined is, uh, it's my way of answering the question about everybody asks, oh, well, they'll ask you, what is liberty? What is freedom? It's people typically say something along the lines of, well, it's being able to do whatever I want. Uh, <laughs> not entirely. You can't just do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, you have to be able to play within a certain set of rules, but those rules everybody gets into a into a frenzy over about how you should, what rules should be there and how they should be implemented and so on. And, and then they ask, then they start saying, well, that's why we need government and you have to do all this stuff there and no. Um, no in, in a nutshell, liberty is about providing the four basics of life and doing so honestly 
and through voluntary means with other people. No coercion whatsoever. Those four basics of life are sustenance, shelter, security, and then happiness. Happiness is always last. If you don't, if you don't acquire the first three, it doesn't matter. You got to have those first three in order to be able to provide happiness. Um, but once you can honestly and and peacefully provide those three things there, you can refine the rest of your time and your intellect and your labor to to further uh, acquire those first three. If that makes you happy, or you can produce something else, entertainment, um, whatever it is. But uh, those those four things are what liberty is all about. And how we how we uh, acquire those things is is just the um, I guess the flare in everybody's life. Um, there is, and this is this will be the the principle behind my uh, next book, Morality Defined, is in how you acquire those things. I won't give away too much, but it's a pretty simple concept. It's just a matter of not infringing upon anybody else's means and abilities to honestly and peacefully acquire the four basics. Um, since we all have three natural resources. There are intellect and our time and our labor. Time we have an arguably infinite amount of. Um, our intellect, just as much as our time. And our labor, well, that's where we can be kind of have a, I guess it's, it varies among each individual, but we all have those three things. And so how we define, or how we create the real wealth that is necessary, the real wealth being anything that can directly satisfy and or improve the quality of your life um, by means of sustenance, shelter, security, and happiness, um, how we produce that is up to us. Um, and so if we are if we are pillaging people and taking from other people what they have already produced, eh, that's definitely a bad thing because it basically hinders the ability of other people to peacefully and honestly sustain and then improve the quality of their lives. You have to create. There's plenty out there to create from. And um, that's pretty much the, the gist of my book. So, Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I get some interesting... Um you know, commentary on uh, capitalism when I talk about, you know, pure, what's pre pure free market capitalism. And uh, my, um, <laughs> some of my family members, they, who are, you know, I grew up Democrat, right? Fiercely Democratic. And, uh, and, and now my mother actually um, describes herself as a socialist, which is probably even worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so my grandfather, one of his criticisms of the stuff that I talk about is, he says, you don't understand Danilo. Um, life and business is like a chess game. It's like Monopoly, right? One person always comes out on top. So do you really want <laughs> somebody to have all the chips at the end? <laughs> yeah. You know, and basically, you know, without government, you say that's what would happen, right? <laughs> no. So what would be your, your response to somebody like that? Well... You can't possibly have all the chips. The only way you can have all the chips is to be God. And, well, none of us are him or her or uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, so you can't, you can't technically stop everybody. You can't do everything. You can't interpret what everybody's going to do. People are fickle. So, you know, you, sure, you might have what you think are all the chips in that little area of what you think is yours, but you don't really yeah. um, need to have all the chips. I mean... Yeah you would have to have a gun to everybody's head basically <laughs> and then to be able to dictate everything and since people can't control the thoughts of others yeah. well there's always going to be some loose ends that will never be tied up so oh, yeah. now you, with or without government nobody can hold all the chips it, it won't work it's mm -hmm. not possible <laughs> yeah and, and w one thing I uh, counter with him is uh, very simplistically like you know um, voluntary exchange between two people is um, it's implied that it's mutually beneficial, right? It's, um, you know, we both win, right? If I have, you know, $5 and you have a sandwich and we trade, uh, you want my $5, right, uh, more than the sandwich, and I want the, the sandwich more than the $5, right? So nobody has lost, right? We both have gained. I don't know. I might actually win in that deal. I get something that satisfies me, and your five dollars just devalued another ten percent because of the Fed. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I won. Well, yeah, that's true. Maybe in the in the uh, long run, but <laughs> maybe let's say if, if it was gold, right? 
<laughs> there you go. Now we're talking. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, that's that's one thing you know. I guess a lot some people don't understand. And, and and what's kind of strange is that my grandfather, he is a businessman. Like he's an entrepreneur. He's owned. He, he he's owned a business now for like twenty seven years, and and it's grown you know a great deal you know and he's he's a pretty savvy guy he knows how to talk to people you know, and uh, and yet that's the view he has like that people are just evil basically you know, <laughs> right right oh, people are what they're taught to be and what they allow themselves to be I'm I'm pretty convinced of that so I don't know I, my dad is the same way. Uh, 30 years in the military, 30 years with the state job. Wow. And so he, there's no talking to him some days. Uh, we don't talk a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe once or twice a year, and that's really it. And he's just, wow. Uh, I have to do X, Y, and Z because he knows better, but then all the things that he wants me to do, it just doesn't work out. I don't fit in, and honestly, I will not go and do something that I find is is immoral uh he gets on to me about well just go back to school go back to school well i'd love to go back to school but i'm not going to take government money to go back to school because well my daughter will have to pay for that and other people's children will have to pay for that and it doesn't matter that i'm only reclaiming something that was stolen in the first place the mm -hmm. point is is that what was stolen is no longer out there it, it's not physically in any government coffer so i'm not going to take that mm -hmm. they are going to simply print more and rob from everybody else through inflation or they're going to um, borrow and then uh, rob from future labor that hasn't even been worked yet so no yeah. I would uh, I would rather just uh, keep on with way I with what I'm doing and, and be done with that and at the end of the day having a college certificate not that I'm demeaning anybody those are there are a lot of great things that can be done with them you can get great education but at the end of the day, a college certificate just simply says that you were able to answer a number of questions and perform the criteria and jump through the flaming hoops of this particular institution over another. I'm not demeaning anybody. I know it, it's an important thing, but honestly, at the end of the day, that's what it looks like to me. And mm -hmm. there are plenty of smart people, but one thing they don't teach in college classes is critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So I, oh, yeah. I'll be I fine where I'm at. <laughs> I have said many times because you know I'm an acupuncturist, so I used to work um, in a, a car accident clinic. So I was I was exposed to a lot of people, and I would frequently tell people, you know, recommend them not to go to college, especially if they're you know high school, and uh, and, and even the ones that are in college, you know, I was like, or, or actually the ones that are not in college, I say, you want to go to college, and they say, yeah, of course, and I say, why? <laughs> And they just look at me weird. What do you mean, why? <laughs> why not? <laughs> because I'm starting to, you know, question uh, something that's, you know, so ingrained in everybody. Like, this is what you do, right? Regardless of if you can afford it or not, you know. Um, it's just like everybody gets into debt, you know. $50,000, $100,000. It's just natural. Everybody's in debt, right? So why wouldn't I be in debt? <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, I got like... Got one long word for that. Boo. <laughs> I'm not interested in it. I am debt free. I don't. Mm. Oh, excellent. That's great. That's not my debt, is not my cup of tea. After 2010, suffering a layoff from, from Delta, working at CVG, uh uh. Nope. I'm yeah. done. Yeah. No more debt. I don't want anything else to do with it. I don't want to owe anything to anybody. Yeah, yeah. Forget it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, talking about debt and, and, and the money, monetary system, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve is something that I. I learned in the very beginning when I first started studying all this, <coughs> and that's what really started got it, getting me thinking about you know <coughs> um, precious metals and then you know free markets and things like that and and so I that's when I started you know buying silver, you know, mostly silver. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's and, and that's I, I think to me that's one of the easiest ways to get people to think about this stuff is talking about precious metals and the history of money and how it has been destroyed and uh, devalued right mm -hmm. and how you know i just tell people very simple facts like you know minimum wage in 1964 is five silver quarters right and today that roughly it, it's like it's like purchasing power of that is roughly like twenty dollars right or twenty five dollars yeah, sure <laughs> you know and uh and then they're like what <laughs> you know people get uh shocked by that <laughs> You know, I, I get some people where I'll tell them, I said, oh, well, there's no reason why we shouldn't be using uh, uh, gold and silver and, and platinum coins, you know. And they're like, well, that's ridiculous. Nobody will accept that. I'm like, okay, well, you don't know that. I mean, you don't know that the local jeweler here in my town, that, uh, that he and his wife won't suddenly 
come up with a ability to be able to measure the purity of the coins and give you a certificate of authenticity and base that on their credibility. You don't know that they won't do that. Mm -hmm. They absolutely might do that. And um, like I said, funny, you mentioned the whole thing with the gold and silver there. There was a book I read a long time ago, oh, maybe about 10 years ago now. It's called uh, Guns of the South by Harry Turtle Dove. And uh, that got me thinking about the monetary system uh, in, the, in the States here. And um, it's an alternate history book about, uh, well, I won't give away too much, but uh, a group of thugs goes back in time, bringing AK-47s and giving it to the Confederacy. And they pay in gold, in wow. actual gold coin. Wow. And uh, after the war is over, well, the South wins, of course. Well, why wouldn't they without that kind of firepower? But um, So they uh, pay in gold, and um, there's this one particular scene where one of the main characters is at a general store. And uh, he pays uh, for his goods in a uh, solid gold piece, and the shop clerk doesn't have enough to give him actual money back mm -hmm. in, in uh, also precious metals. Mm -hmm. So what he does is he divides it up between uh, Confederate papered money, uh, some uh, precious coins in return, and a, a bit of store credit. But he, the man still, the main character still gets his change, and that got me thinking: Why can't we do stuff like that now? Why is it? Why? Why? Why wouldn't that work? Mm -hmm. I mean, we already do that with gift cards and everything else. So what's the? You know, I mean, why wouldn't that work now? You know, so. Uh, that and then uh, shortly after that, um, I think I found uh, one of Ron Paul's books uh, in the Fed, and then uh, mm -hmm. and then from there it was uh, it was all downhill. The, the government lost their control on me, and I started that. I knew where I was headed at that point. <laughs> so. Very nice. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. You know, the monetary system because um, it's it's you know I tell people that you know for thousands of years people have been using this stuff, and it's been you know, quite stable, pretty much. You know, unless in in certain um, in certain empires like the Roman Empire and in the, the ancient Greeks, where they began to um, you know clip the coins and you know um, corrupt it like that way, and, and that basically you know I, I don't I don't know if you can say that's the primary reason they 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 collapsed, but you know one one of the main reasons, and um, and how they you know the the just story just keeps repeating repeating and. You know, different actors, different costumes, but the story is essentially the same, right? Absolutely. So it's a matter of learning the story and understanding the trends and how, you know, humans interact with each other. I think you can benefit, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, just people just need to take a moment, think for themselves. Too much, uh, too much, okay, well, I'll just go down this path. It's already tread and it's easy and I know kind of how I'll work with it rather than creating their own path. Yeah. Too many followers, not enough leaders in that respect. Usually it's the other way around. Too many leaders, not enough people <laughs> doing their own thing, I suppose. But uh, I don't know. There's no one right answer for everything. Everybody has to find their own answer, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's quite true. And that's what I love about, about volunteerism is that um, it's, it's an open admission that nobody knows all the answers, right? Mm -hmm. That everybody is their own master, Right, and you should not look to anybody to guide you or to lead you, or say to the promised land, whatever you know, whatever that is, and especially, but you know, by using the stolen funds of you know through taxation and uh, uh, things like that, you know, <laughs> you know, sure, if you want to follow somebody, go ahead, but why, why are you going to take someone else's money to do that? <laughs> right. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a shame that it has to be that way, but. Yeah, you know, one mind and one generation at a time. Yeah. Eventually, we'll get there. So long as we can make it off this rock and out into the cosmos, we might have a better chance. Yeah. As I see it now, um, we're going to have to make it off this rock because there's nowhere else really to run. The dispersion is our uh, is going to be our greatest defense against this statism, this disease called statism. Yeah. So um, we have to get away from it. Uh, bad ideas, you know. People will inherently just stick to bad ideas for one reason or another. Sometimes there's just no changing their minds. But if we can make it off this rock and we can we can get out there off of Earth and get get past the our solar system and explore the rest of the galaxy, we'll have a much better fighting chance, I think. Because mm. uh, as as it stands now, with one weapon that can pretty much uh, annihilate us, 
because somebody had a bad hair day or something. Uh, that's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> it's bad enough, you know. We've got uh, we've got our own issues, and uh, yeah, I, I wrote something the other day. Um, I put it on my uh, on my uh, Liberty to Find page here. Um, oh, here it is. Uh, liberty is actually free. It's tyranny that adds so much artificial cost to life. Uh, the only cost to liberty should be those that occur naturally at the hands of Earth and the cosmos she's a child of. Uh, we've got plenty to worry about without having to, to beat and berate and harass one another. All we have to do is just let one another just do our things, and if we want to work together, we can work together. If we don't want to work together, that's okay. We don't have to. But don't hinder other people peacefully and honestly providing for themselves. That's the problem there. So... Yeah, and it's amazing that it needs to be said. Like, like, don't. <laughs> so basically, it's like, you know, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal from other people, don't kill people, and we should all be fine. <laughs> like, that's such a simple concept. Why is it so difficult to apply universally? Right? Some people they have this, uh, they have this belief that uh, government is this enormous exception to the law of morality. Right. <laughs> well. That's, that's something I think a lot of people don't understand either, is the whole concept of morality. It took me a long time to figure it out, and there are people going... There, people will absolutely probably jump down my throat. But I don't know them, and so long as I don't know them, they can't jump down my throat. But I'm sure it'll come. Uh, no, morality is such a simple concept to understand, and people always... Well, well what, is, like, what is liberty? Well, it's, I can do whatever I want. Well, what is morality? Well, it's, just, it's right from wrong. You just kind of know what it is. Uh, no, that's not good enough. That, that's way too vague. That's I need, why... I need it written down on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, I think a lot of people need that. Uh, I... God knows I could have used that when I was younger, but um, this morality is the issue there, and people don't understand that. It has nothing to do with deities. It has nothing to do with authority. It has everything to do with the perpetuation of humanity, um, the peaceful perpetuation of humanity. Simply put, it's a matter of not infringing upon anybody's ability to peacefully and honestly provide the four basics of their life and to improve upon the quality of their life. That's simply it. It is, it is the um, morality is all about perpetuating the pinnacle of humanity's success to greater and greater heights by not, by not infringing or stopping or hindering or retarding or, or in any way disabling anybody's ability outside of the realm of self-defense to provide for themselves peacefully and honestly. That's it. That, nice. That's really all the mor all morality is. And people, they, they want to add, well, you have to have this, or so-and-so has to do this. And no, no, no. The individual just has to go out and provide for himself, inter interact with other people voluntarily, learn to take no for an answer, and understand that charity is, is, is all about voluntary interactions. If you're if you're gonna jump up in somebody's face and oh, you owe me this, you you're 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 a terrible, cold-hearted bastard because you won't help me. Well, I don't want to help you if you're going to jump down my throat about that. I don't want anything to do with it. I would much rather go and give, you know, put five silver quarters in the guy's cup on the corner at my local Kroger store, and only because he had a sign up. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to take your money and buy beer with it. I will give it to him before I give it to somebody who's truly in need, and demanding that I help them. Yep. I won't do it. It's not, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong for it, but you know what? I'm, I don't like to be coerced in any way. I don't like to be threatened and that's not okay. Yeah. Karma will come back to these people. Even if it doesn't come back to them through me, it will come back from somebody. Somebody else will actually absolutely step up and not be as kind as you or I or others might be. And we might not go and punch that guy in his face to get him to back down. But somebody else might not have the same temperament we have, might not have the same amount of patience we have. Mm. Somebody else will go up to that individual demanding, you have to do this for me. They will go up to that individual and they will make sure that individual does not do do that ever again. Yep. And so, yeah, karma. Quite true. Yeah, talking about charity, you know, I was just thinking about the uh, Social Security. And it's like, Social Security basically is like um, government is saying, you know, people are not charitable enough to the elderly, right? So we have to 
forcibly uh, steal your currency and give it to the elderly, right? Because people are not nice enough. <laughs> so we're going to just take it from you and give it to them. <laughs> well, you know, it's a like forced, forced charity. It's kind of a strange concept. Well, I think that's what they want us to believe, but I don't think that Social Security or any of that's ever meant to be. It was never meant to be charitable to begin with. I'm pretty sure it was a 1930s program or something like that uh, with the stamp of blue eagle stamp of approval or some garbage like that and you know they just they just need some money well we're going to send all these people off to war well they're going to die hundreds of thousands of them are going to die in, 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 over in Europe we'll have their money and um, then uh, we'll be able to just spend some of that and uh, use it to buy whatever we want and uh, then after the war was over, I, I remember reading something about uh, there were these uh, programs. Oh, let's go out and have babies, have kids, you know, make lots of kids. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I'm almost certain that was tied to the whole idea of Social Security and other retirement programs like that. And, uh, you know, they knew it was a pyramid scheme to begin with. And it was a racist one, too. And that's what kills me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I am a, just to be clear, so everybody listening, I am a white male from the south born and raised in the state of georgia i'm not don't, not afraid to admit it love georgia miss her very much but um i have a lot of friends uh, I, I know a lot of people and uh this is going to make a lot of people upset but i it's i didn't i didn't do this this was done way before i was ever born or even thought of social security has got to be one of the most racist programs in existence as far as the federal government is concerned um it intentionally i'm pre i I don't remember where I read it at, but uh, it was stated that the first um, implementation of Social Security, whites were given one age limit, and then blacks were given a separate age limit. If it wasn't done originally, it was done after the fact. But no matter what, the original age limit was set high enough to where whites would, uh, would be able to obtain it. And most blacks wouldn't oh, simply sure. because of the living standards and the quality of living for these for these people for you know at the time. Uh, so I mean, that's government charity for you. I mean, when it's charity, it's still not charity. So it's terrible, and wow, oh, that's frustrating. <laughs> wow, yeah, I did not know that um, about that. Well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did, I did, uh, I did hear about that. They in intentionally set it at an age where most people, you know, like the life expectancy was not the age that it, <laughs> you know, at the time in the 1930s, life expectancy was much lower than the, the age that they set it at. And, and I think I, I don't know if they increased it recently or, or they're slated to increase it or something. But yeah, I don't expect uh, to see any of that money, of course. Um, but but every time I talk about the abolition of government. To, to people, especially my, you know, my family, <laughs> uh, especially the elderly, they get kind of, uh, um, you know, incensed because it's like, what, you don't want to take care of old people? <laughs> you know, they think they can take it as a personal attack on them. Like, you know, you don't want to pay your taxes. I get that all the time. <laughs> no, it just, you don't want to pay your fair share or exactly. you don't want to help somebody. It's a, it's always one logical fallacy or another. Yes, logical fallacy. Yeah, that's another thing I've been, I've been studying a lot about, logical fallacies. That's, it's amazing, you know, when you when you realize, you know, how many of those people use um, to, you know, erroneously further their argument, and it's just it's just w without any grounding, you know, it has no basis, no foundation. Is there any any interesting uh, like conversations you have with people, you know, trying to spread, you know, anarchy, you know, in your daily life, you know, when you're going to the store or something, uh, like how do you how do you approach this, these topics? Uh. Most times, I don't even talk to people about it. They're not interested in learning. I, I, I've noticed that a lot of people typically have some position or whatever that they cling to for, for whatever reason. And they always are, they're, they're set in their ways. They make one justification after another. And it's not until the epiphany that government is bad high-fives them right in the face that they just, they, they don't get it. They have to experience some personal tragedy they have to have their own little vendetta against government or why it doesn't work um, but typically I don't um, although this afternoon I did go went to the store went grocery shopping with my daughter and she wants 
she always she wants something. Yeah, they're ten years old. I'm like, Dad, can I get this? Dad, can I get that? Okay. No, no, we're not getting that. And she, she she's a big fan. She she loves bologna. <laughs> and wanted that, and uh, you know, it's not so bad. When I was little, I remember, oh, I remember being about fifteen, go yeah. to the store and get a package of beef bologna, a big old huge package, like a pound worth of it. You know, like eighty five, ninety nine cents, something like that. But now we're looking at almost four bucks, and it's not even a half a pound in yeah. most packages, and it's ridiculous. And she said, "No, I want this kind. I don't want a whole lot." I'm like, "No, I'm not buying that to you." And she's like, "Why?" Well, first, I'm not paying that price for that. And um, then I want you to look at how much you get in this package versus this package. And she's like, why is that package bigger than this package? Well, this package is beef, and there's a beef crisis in the nation because of a lot of different reasons. It's cold. Thousands of head of cattle just perished because of an early winter in Montana and in, the, in, the, in, in that side of the country. And also because the federal government is stupid and hates cows and doesn't want us to buy them because they keep raising all these new EPA regulations and all this stuff here and they're basically trying to make it difficult for people and to collect money and to control people and they just got rid of some regulations on the price on pork and and lifted some restrictions there and now the pork price is falling and that's why that package of of bologna is cheaper than this package of bologna and she just kind of looked at me like what? <laughs> and uh, of course there was another lady standing behind her she was just I mean her mouth was about to hit the floor and she was just looking at me like did you so she just uh, I heard her later on walking past and past me in the store and she's like I want to look at this the, the beef price isn't that like, that, did you hear that guy back there and it's like so uh, yeah it was kind of funny I heard that but um, now typically I don't uh I don't talk to a lot of people about it unless somebody asks me a question, and yeah. most of the people I know now, um, they don't ask me questions because if they, they really don't. If they believe in some way that government might come up, they don't ask a question of me because they know I'll, I'll, I'll uh, tell them something that they probably don't want to hear. So, <laughs> so I, exactly. You know, people ask me, yeah, if people ask you a question, and then you. You tell them, you know, what you truly believe, and then they get angry. It's like, why'd you even ask me? Yeah, <laughs> if you I didn't want to hear the answer. Um, oh, yeah. no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just, I, I guess people just want a value menu of information. They, they, they want to pick a number three with, with <laughs> not all of these facts quite so, but they want to pepper it with some of these uh, fallacies here, and yeah. then they want that. You know, they just want something to solidify what they think they know is the truth instead of knowing the truth all the way, but. And then they get mad at you when you tell them, or they get mad at you when they find out that was the real thing, or then when they find out that they were wrong, and they get mad at you, why didn't you tell me? Well, I did. You were <laughs> screaming at me. So, eh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I think one of the, one of the first things that we need to um, understand when we're in the pursuit of knowledge and truth is that, you know, culture and, uh, you know, some of the beliefs that you were raised with uh, will be proven wrong. And and that's nothing to be scared of. Um, I mean, it is a painful process to realize all the stuff that you believed growing up are just wrong. But that's part of growing. You know, the part of, part of improvement, proving yourself. You know, absolutely. You know, and uh, I think that's a painful thing for. Like, I think uh, Fred, um, Nietzsche, he said that um, people don't want their illusions to be destroyed. Right. <laughs> hmm. Sounds about right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I I, I try as much as possible. I mean. The way I approach it, though, like, I don't, you know, come out, of course, and say I'm an anarchist. You know, that would be completely deterrent and <laughs> shut people off. Um, but I do, you know, start slowly asking people questions like, you know, um, are you going to, you know, going to college? How much student debt, you know, do you have? And, you know, do you really think that it's going to be, you know, um, what you're studying is going to be applicable to the real world? <laughs> you know, stuff like And I start, maybe I go into money in the Federal Reserve, money creation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can get pretty in depth, like while the the cashier is 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 uh, you know scanning my items, so, you know occasionally by the end of it I'm already talking about quantitative easing and and the mandrake mechanism, so. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it could be it could be pretty, but that's just how I am. You know, I just talk. I just you know. And no, it's all right. Don't put us in the same shopping line together. <laughs> yeah, it, it might be a riot. Well, hopefully, hopefully you'll chime in if you're there. I mean, <laughs> he's right. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but um, but but yeah. I mean, I I really um, you know, I enjoy I enjoy talking about it because um, 
you know, it's I'm passionate about it, and um, you know, when you're especially when you're passionate about something, you know, you, you, you and you talk, people will listen more, right? When uh, uh, and you and you can defend your, you know, you can defend yourself with uh, you're armed with knowledge, right? That you've that you studied through all these, you know, all the books and all the podcasts and all the things you've heard and you know listened to and you know your own thoughts. So um, I think people pick up on that passion and it's infectious, right? So that's kind of what I try to spread is the passion. If not, you know, for anarchy, just, just for inquisitiveness and just questioning things and being skeptical about, you know, things that you're told, um, you know, especially stuff that you're told in public school. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of sad that people give me the, 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 uh, the uh, reasoning, like their rebuttals is everything that was, was force-fed them in government school that's their response is like don't you realize that that's what everybody thinks don't you realize that's the mainstream um you know uh what do you call it narrative <laughs> you know oh I, I, every once in a while i'll i'll talk to somebody and um uh I, i'll ask him a question i'll ask him I'm just curious do do you really think it's a good idea to have the policeman and the taxman, and the judge, and the jury, and the executioner, all on the same payroll? Do you really think that's a good idea? And then you want to put the educators on that payroll, too? That's a terrible idea. And do you know what that payroll is? That payroll is you and me. We are, we are extorted for that. And you think it's voluntary? You try not paying your stuff there. You know, and that's said a lot. But people, like, well, it, we have to. We have to do this. Yeah, no, we don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. We just have to let each other just go. Mm -hmm. But then there always, always somebody comes up. And there always some rebuttal. Well, what about, what if this guy nukes us or something? I'm like, well, you know what? It's terribly unfortunate that there are bad people in this world. But yeah. you're only making more bad people in this world by justifying tiny acts of aggression against others it, it, it's, it's not okay people all the time they i will defend the confederate uh, the confederate uh, the confederacy over the union mm -hmm. any day of the week they're both still wrong mm -hmm. but you know the confederacy was only slightly more righteous than the union i, I will defend that i mean why did the Confederacy fight? They they fought because they were being invaded. They didn't. You can cite or anybody can cite the Articles of Secession. Okay, that's fine. So, um, what twelve, thirteen documents is going to explain exactly why all these people seceded uh, after uh, seventy something years? No, 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 no. You go back and look at all of the debates in 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 the in the U.S. legislature. You look at all the deba debates in the U.S. Senate. You look at all the debates in the various legislature, uh, legislatures in the, in the southern states. You look at all of that and then tell me, did all of that come up in those secession documents? No, no. The, the, the slavery might have been the thing in the secession documents, but it was not, absolutely was not the only reason. And yes, slavery was the main reason of the secession documents, but it was about economics. Mm -hmm. It was about control of the money supply. The same, the same thing as was the case with the reason why the um, 13 colonies rebelled against England. Um, they would have gladly taken, taken the brunt and continued to do X, Y, and Z. They would have put up with the tax. I see that, that meme too all the time on, on Facebook where they, 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 they go there, well, we were the, our founders or something would have rebelled with a three percent tax on tea. No, 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 no. That's actually that's actually kind of crap. The founders would the founders rebelled because the king he said, "No, we are going to control your money supply. We are going to coin it. We are going to regulate it. We are going to do this." And they had colonial script at the time, and that was the big thing. And um, then when he came in and he started posting edicts about that, um, then. Now, that was the problem, and it became similar with the war, uh, with the war of federal aggression in 1861, where the the federal government was trying to uh, regulate the economy of the South, and um, then they're like, "See, I told you, slavery was the issue." No, 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 no. If slavery really was the issue, then then the Confederacy would not have. Uh, been trying to end slavery through the uh, Constitution of the Confederate States of America. They wouldn't have tried to end it that way. They actually banned slavery and um, banned importation of slaves into the, you know, all Confederate states and territories with that document. I mean, you know, 
granted, you know, the Constitution is not fit to exist one way or the other because it, you know, Lysander Spooner, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. So, but the point is, is that they tried to end it and they only allowed the importation of slaves from one other country. And I have people like go to go to uh, go Google the Avalon Project uh, Const Confederate Constitution um, on I think it's Yale's website or something like that, and check it out. Uh, it says that the Confederate States would only allow the importation of slaves into or from one country. That country was the United States. Hmm. Why? Because the economy of the uh, United States was still heavily dependent on slavery. No, they weren't technically buying slaves, but they had arms and liquor and supplies that they were still sending out on the trade routes that were going from South America to Africa to parts of uh, Portugal and Spain and then back to New England and to the South. And then, and so, you know, the, the, the South, the, 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 the writers of the, of the Confederate Constitution understood that. And that's one of those things. And, and that's actually the big thing there. Uh, you had asked me earlier about uh, one of the things that had gotten me started on this path. Mm -hmm. And that was actually trying to figure out why the South was more right than the North. Mm -hmm. And that was a big thing, studying history, and I was asking questions about that. And I tried to figure out why, and I couldn't, I couldn't quite place it. And um, eventually, I, that led me to actually reading all the other books that I have. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that is a... Oh, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, I was just going to say, um, it reminded me of Lincoln and, uh, and how he's, um, you know, basically put on a pedestal for his, uh, you know, Emancipation Proclamation, you know, <laughs> the, the general narrative that people are fed in the, in the government schools and how he was such a great man and, and everything. And then afterwards, you learn about the other side of Lincoln, the, uh, the crony, you know, corporate <laughs> fascistic, uh, you know, racist <laughs> st uh, type Lincoln that... Uh, is not necessarily mentioned. No, no, that, that's right. something else that kills me too, is people are like, he, oh, he's a great guy, but um, the thing, one of the things that Lincoln did that that, that we, we try to hang people for today, I guess politically hang them, I suppose, uh, was uh, he actually owned land in Illinois where the Pacific Railway Act, uh, I think it was like 1862 or 63 or something like that, uh, he, he had land that he sold and, and, and profited off of government money, um, that, that railway act, where the railway railroad went right through his land. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, I mean, how is that not a conflict of interest? I mean, <laughs> really? And we're yeah. angry at Al Sharpton today for what he's doing, and he's not even anywhere near president? <laughs> although, although I'd high-five Al Sharpton for tax evasion. I mean, yeah. job well done, sir, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'd rather go shake hands with Leslie Snipes. Tax evasion there, that was... oh. That was a great movie, his last movie, that Expendables, by the way. They, they made mention of that, and I about fell off my sofa laughing at that one. I thought it was funny. Oh, did they? I didn't even see yeah, it. Yeah, they did. It was great. It was great. It was just a short thing, but uh, most yeah, yeah. people would miss it, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, that's, that's interesting, you know, talking about movies and everything. That's one thing that uh, most, a lot of anarchists have been saying, you know, it's learning about volunteerism and anarchy really ruins the entertainment <laughs> experience of going to the movie. Oh, it does. <laughs> it does. I... I, I watched the Avengers the first time. I, I was all excited because I like to see the... Don't get me wrong, I love military equipment. That's great. I mean, the engineering that goes behind that is just remarkable. And I would walk right past a soldier who just gave his life or do what, did whatever he does. And I would like, hey, man, I want to talk to your engineer. I don't care about you. I want to talk to the engineer. That's what I want to do. Wow. But, uh, yeah, no, and then, but I watched, I, I watched it the first time, I was just in awe, and then I watched it the second time, status propaganda, 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 oh, my, ru my movie is so ruined. <laughs> yeah. and, what, oh. and what about your wife, does she, does she lament your, uh, like, you pointing out all these, uh, <clears throat> you know, the status flaws in the movies? Uh, for a while she did, um, we're, we've since separated and, uh, oh, gone yeah. through the divorce thing, but, um, it was amicable. It was amicable. Everything is fine. We just realized we're much better friends than we are uh, anything else. Right, so, right. but uh, yeah, yeah, she uh, she would get she would, that would get on her nerves. But then she was a um, graphic design artist, and um, she was good at uh, at uh, animation. So she would point out all the animation flaws, and I would point out all the uh, all the propaganda in there. And so we could never get through a movie together. So no. 
<laughs> all the all the historical flaws. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 really um, amusing when people try to uh, have a uh, rational argument with me, and they cite Hollywood movies as proof for their argument. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you you get that sometimes. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I I, I do <laughs> I I do get that. Um, it. But but in the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that, that wasn't even what in the movie or in the book because the book was still not it wasn't even close to the, what the book was about. So oh really? <laughs> no, the, yeah. No, oh, that's one of my favorite books. I, I read that book. Tolkien is one of my favorite authors. So I've read I've read those books dozens and dozens of times. Wow. And it's, it's just if I could go back in time and talk to him, I would absolutely do it. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, that's, that's my wife's one of my wife's favorite uh, trilogies is the Lord of the Rings. We haven't actually seen the recent, the newer ones, the Hobbit series, but um, I don't know. I don't know how that compares with the original trilogy. Um, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> we, we haven't seen movies, re you know, in a while for for another reason. My uh, my my two young kids I have a two year old and a four year old, so they don't actually make uh, you know going out to the movies easy. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so you know, but uh, what are you gonna do? There's certain. Uh, concessions you have to make and uh, now my, my free time is much more valuable since it's scarce right law supply and demand so <laughs> so now I, I make sure I devote it to uh, uh, ventures of uh, prime importance which would be uh, you know writing and making videos and uh, you know pursuing uh, basically volunteers in anarchy so oh wasting a Friday night with a old man like me huh <laughs> well you know there's a uh, there's other things I can be doing, but this is very enjoyable to me. So that's what I. Although my wife, my, my, my wife would, uh, <laughs> she actually told me recently, she's like, "Can you please do something that makes money?" <laughs> I got that a lot. You get that, I got a lot? that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's 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 sad that you know people who take up this, um, you know, this uh, mission, uh, perhaps we're not necessarily, you know. Um, you know, complete successes, right? Financial successes, but we're striving for something different. You know, uh, we have a different goal in mind, right? So, no, you're just doing what uh, you're improving the quality of your life uh, by pursuing a uh, little bit of other different kinds of voluntary exchanges. You're enriching yourself. You're supposedly you're gaining something from talking to me. So uh, you must be you must be finding some value in this. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing it. So. You know, I mean, you're just improving the quality of your life. That's that's what's what you're doing. And yeah. apparently, I feel the same way. Otherwise, I wouldn't have shown up. So, Excellent. well, thank you. <laughs> well, okay. So uh, I don't want to keep you any longer. Um, so why don't you uh, let people know where they can find your work, your book, or anything like that? Okay. Well, uh, Liberty Defined. It's available on uh, SmashWords.com, uh, Barnes and Nobles. Um, should be available in the Apple uh, iTunes Store, and. Uh, According to my publisher's notes, it's supposed to be available also on uh, Google Google Books too. So but, uh, I should have another one, Morality Defined, coming out uh, towards the end of winter, 2014-2015. And um, that's really all I got. Never been asked to plug a book before, so I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Excellent. Any uh, any last uh, message you want to leave the listeners? Um. Yeah, you know, if if your interactions with somebody are are not absolutely, completely, totally voluntary, then there might be something that needs to be rethought about that interaction. Just just keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. There's basically two ways to live life, right? Through coercion or through voluntary means, and it's a fundamental difference. And it's a basic principle that a lot of people can get quite confused, and it's kind of sad that people get confused about it. Um, but that's our job, right? To uh, illuminate this confusion. One mind and one generation at a time. Yeah, well said. Well, thank you very much, Jim, for the opportunity to speak. Um, so hopefully we'll do it again sometime soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I yep, appreciate it. No problem. So this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network uh, and uh, the Conscious Resistance Network. Um, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.